<laughs> hey guys, just to share, we had a gate of 3.1 million, making this the number two combat sport event in American Airlines Center history. That includes six UFC pay-per-view events. The only event to have done better than us was right after the pandemic, obviously, which was the last UFC pay-per-view here. So very proud of Jake and Nate for what they accomplished here tonight. I want to thank the American Airlines Center for their partnership. We want to thank DAZN, and we definitely want to thank Celsius as our presenting sponsor. And with that, I'll open up to questions for Jake Paul. Jake, was he tougher than what you thought? Uh, no. Is this working? Hello. Is it? Uh, yeah. No, I mean, it's what I expected, right? Like, he, that's what he's known for. I don't know how he survived the first round, but he's a dog, and I walked the dog. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a new fighter, and it's uh, the new team we brought in, the new strength and conditioning. Shout out Larry Wade, shout out Third, shout out Jay Leon, Shane Mosley, everyone, the nutritionist James Lockwood, everyone's on point. So everything was new, and I worked harder this camp. They pushed me to my limits. There was times in the gym where I was sitting there like, damn, I don't even know if I could do this, but I just kept on believing in myself, and now my gas tank is, is crazy. I could have kept on going. I could have went 12 rounds, and we're just stepping up. Up and up and up, and to do it after three years, I'm I'm uh, happy with myself. Hey, you need to control like. Then you went for the knockout, and then you kind of held back, maybe because you didn't want to like leave it all there just in case. What was the strategy there? Yeah, look, my, my motor was running hot, and I was punching him hard and hard and hard, and he wasn't he wasn't going down. He was standing there, and so I didn't want to burn out and then let him catch a wind and come back with something. Uh, so I was being patient, being smart, and was looking to for the kill, uh, but at the end of the day, he, he withstood a bunch of big, big, big punches. So, Jake. Hey, guys, guys, guys. Michael will let you know who's talking. Hey, right here. Come on, Jake. What's it like fighting someone who's that um, erratic guy? You walk around the ring, take little breaks, give you funny looks, show you different things. What well, it, it was fun, and I knew he was trying to take breaks, so I would pounce on him when when he was doing that. And we were talking to each other the whole fight, man. He was he was saying words that I can't repeat here, <laughs> but I was just I was like, man, where's all that talk now? Bah, gotcha, shut up, <laughs> boom. So it was fun. It when you're in there with another dog, like you can you can sense it. Um, and, and it just makes the, the sport more fun, and, and this fight was probably the most memorable yet. For sure, yeah. Th there's this like pressure off, and I know that I'm meant to be here, and I did exactly what I said I was going to do, which is when I lost, I came back and got better and showed the world how to lose on the biggest stage and come back and then win on the biggest stage. And it just goes to show for anyone out there that's losing, it may be a boxing match or maybe in life, take the L on the chin, get up the next day, and, and get back. And Listen, don't that, stop. That split decision loss was the best thing that could have ever happened for Jake Paul. Because had he had won, nothing probably would have changed. He would have continued with the same team, with the same regiment, with the same focus. So in my mind, that loss has really resulted in him being a much more dangerous and much more high probability of becoming a world champion. You agree? Yeah, the, the loss seriously was the best thing. It set me on the path that I was supposed to be on, and you can't cut corners in this sport. And uh, I was in the gym. The day after the loss, flew back from the Middle East and was in the gym every single day up until this fight because I knew I was going to get back and come back stronger. Chris, Chris Belcher, House of Highlights. A couple of days ago, I asked you to rank your opponents. Where would you rank Nate? And also, was it a surprise for you seeing Logan come in? And what did he tell you when he showed up? And what did that mean to you? Man, it was just crazy that my brother was there. And when he, when his energy entered into the locker room, everything felt perfect. And it just felt like this was going to be our night. And I was just having fun. And that was the missing ingredient, you know, in my last fight. Now I'm, I'm having fun back on that side of things. And Nate was the toughest person I've fought yet to date. So, for sure. Jake, what's one thing that you took from an ADS fight, which you thought you knew going into it, but then in the fight, it surprised you? One thing I took from it, Mm, 
I think the confidence in knowing I can go 10 rounds with nonstop power punching is is really great experience and I'm just getting more and more comfortable in the ring and learning to box learning to slow things down and see things vision clear so that experience is priceless What did he say? I don't care about that guy. Yeah, he needs to go to rehab. I want Nate in MMA. I want more professional boxers, and I want Canelo. Thank you, Jake. So, you know, all week you were great. We saw you in workouts. We saw you at the, the press conference. Um, you said that you've done new things in training. Can you talk a little bit about your work with the Kronk and some of that stuff and how that helped you in this fight? Yeah, man, that Kronk attitude, uh, that third brought to the gym every single day, and it was really that balance, that footwork, and not letting me make any mistakes. Um, it, it was a it was a game changer, and he pushed me hard with the punches and power punching and 20 rounds, 25 rounds, sparring more and more than I ever have before, and that's what prepared me to go 10 rounds with the absolute warrior. Do you think that, uh, that Nate was surprised by your power when you knocked him down? For sure. I could see it the whole fight. In the first round, I, I seen his eyes light up, and he was like, okay, they talk about this kid's power, but when you feel it, it's different. Last question, Mike. He yeah, he fucking choked me. He was actually choking me. No, he was actually choking me. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. I didn't think he was going to stop, but he had it in. Because I, obviously I'm not going to try to defend it. But yeah, like, it's just funny. <laughs> I, I was like, this is crazy. But but uh, yeah, man, like, that's why I want to do it back in MMA. That, that was, it's fun, man. I'm, I'm with all the shit. Yeah, but like, if I'm ready for it, I would have dropped if it was an MMA, I would have dropped to a double leg, picked him up, and dropped him on his head. Thank you, everybody. Thank we you appreciate guys. all the support. We appreciate the media. Thank you, guys.